Spice Man. That's right. Keep adding up, multiplying, man. Spice Man. Oh, yes. A couple things we're going to learn today. Spice Man. All right. Take some time, educate yourself. Spice Man. That's right. You won't believe it's just man. Come on. Hi, I'm Ruth Dutton. Hi, I'm Aaron Williams. Hi, I'm Brandon Alexander. Hi, I'm Kelvin Dutton. Hello, I'm Lyndon Sincere. We are your Spice Math Tutors. You won't believe it's just math. Hi, I'm Cassandra Strong, and we're back for yet another episode. Now today, we're focusing on subtracting fractions. Now we have already established that there are different types of fractions, and it isn't at all instances you just have to subtract proper fractions. So three things we want to get done today. The first thing, we will have to be able to subtract fractions with similar denominators. So let's start again. What if we have 4 over 5, and I want to subtract, I want to take away 2 over 5? Again, the denominators are the same. So, we do not get rid of it. We're going to keep our denominator, and our denominator will be 5. Now, the operation we're working on is subtraction. So, we're going to take away 2 from 4. So 4 minus 2, 2, you got that correct. So answer will be 2 over 5. Isn't that simple? Just to prove the point, let's try another one. 7 over 9, and this time, we're going to take away 8 over 9. Ah, somebody's jumping up, I got it. Yeah, you have it, you're correct. I'm going to keep my denominator, which is 9, and I'm going to... Take away 7 from 8. Now, can I take away 7 from 8? I can take away 7 from 8, but can I take 8 from 7? No. No miss. That can't happen. So I want us to hold this here. We're going to hold this there because obviously I cannot take 8 from 7. But when we get further on, we'll see how something like that can be solved if I have a whole number to use. So let's try 11 over 12, and we're going to take away 5 over 12. Can I do that? Yes, I can do that. So, what do I do? I'm going to keep my, keep my denominator, which is 12. And if I take away 5 from 11, 5 already gone, I'm going to have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Correct. I will have 6 over 12. Now, those numbers look familiar, agree? 6 is half of 12. 12 is a multiple of 6. 6 is a factor of 12. So therefore, that fraction can be broken down. Can you think of a number that you can divide 6 and 12 by? I have 2. I have 3. No, not 4. Not 5. I have 6. Now, if I use 2, I'll have a number of steps. So let's find the highest common factor. Yes, you know what that is. So the biggest number that can go both into 6 and 12 will be 6. So if I divide 6 by 6, what will I get? 1. Correct. And if I divide 12 by 6, what will I have? 2. So my answer here will be a half. Now, for those of you who prepare for CPA, because the exam is multiple choice, you must be able to break down your answer because I can see a student saying, Miss, I got 6 out of 12, but the answer is not in the multiple choice. The answer is there. It's just that you did not break it down. So once we work in with fractions with the same denominator, we keep the denominator and we will simply subtract our numerators. Now there are times when it may become a little difficult where they may give you a whole number and ask you to subtract a proper fraction for it, from it. So let's say, now we're going to block this off for a while. 
And then I'm going, I have eight, and I'm asked to take away two over seven from that eight. Now looking at something like that, somebody will be like, oh, that might be a bit difficult. So let's make things a little easier. Is it possible that I can say that eight is equal to seven plus one? You're right. So this eight becomes seven plus one. Now, if I am to get a whole in a fraction form, it means that my numerator and my denominator must be the same. So I'm going to keep my seven. This one will not be converted to a proper fraction. Hence, let's look at that seven. We want to keep the denominators alike. So my denominator will be seven. And if I want a whole, my numerator must also be seven. Isn't that true? So now I'm actually working with seven and seven over seven. And I'm now going to take two sevens from it. You're looking at this. Oh, it's easy now. Of course it's easy now because a while ago we did fractions with similar denominators. So do I have a whole number to take from the seven? No. So I'm going to keep my seven. What happens here? The denominators are the same. What do we do? Keep the denominator. And I'm subtracting two from seven. What would that give me? Five. Correct. So the first thing we did is that we took our whole number and we made it into a mixed number. How did we do that? We added one to another number to make the original number. So if I have eight, it will be seven plus one. If it's 10, I will have what? Nine plus one. If it's five, what you will have? Four plus one. And how will we get our fraction? We're going to look at the denominator of the fraction that has been given, and we're going to make a whole. Remember, for the whole, the numerator and the denominator must be the same. Now I want you to ponder. So take a look at this first question over here. It says 12 minus 2 over 7. Now work this out for me. The first question, 12 minus 2 over 7. I know some persons have other ways. I'm just demonstrating one method. So do I keep my 12? You are changing the 12 to something plus 1. Can you tell me what plus 1 will give you 12? Ah, you got that correct. So we're going to have 11 plus 1. How will I get that one? That one will be 7 over 7. And then I'll have an answer of 11 and 5 over 7. You're working well so far. Now, I know you got a glance of two mixed numbers being subtracted. So that's the next area we'll be looking at at this time. So our first question will be 4 and 8 over 20. And we're going to be taking away 3 and 1 fifth. 4 and 8 over 20, and we're going to be taking away 3 and 1 fifth. Now we're looking at it. Remember, I always tell you, if you have trouble, think a little money. Get excited. This is like $4.00, and I'm taking away $3.00, and right? So let's work with that. The first thing I need to do is work with my whole numbers. I have 4 and 3. So I'll be taking 3 from 4. And if I take 3 away from 4, I'll get 1. Correct. Ah, but we're going to have a problem here. Why? The denominators are not the same. Remember, we said when denominators are not the same, we need to find the LCM. So can I find a multiple of both 5 and 20? Can I find a number that both 5 and 20 can go into? 10? No, because 20 can go into 10. 15? 20. Let's stop at 20. So we use the LCM of 20. So let's look. Remember the steps. 
divide the LCM by the, D, the denominator, then multiply it by the numerator. So we're working now with 8 over 20. How many times can 20 go into 20? 1. So I'll get 1, and I need to multiply it by my 8, and that will give me an answer of 8. So the product from this will go here. Now be very careful. It's quite often that students will forget that they're doing subtraction and put an addition sign. And show that your operation is the same. Now, how many fives can I get into 20? Count with me. 5, 10, 15, 20. So I need to take that 4 and I'm going to multiply it by my 1. And that will give me 4. So the product from there will go here. So now... I'm left with this. Now it's always important that you show your steps so persons can follow what you're doing. And if by chance your answer is wrong, your work in might just save the day. So eight minus four will be four. And then I have my denominator of 20. Now, what do you notice? Four and 20 are both even numbers, correct? Four is a factor of 20. And 20 is a multiple of 4. So can I break down that fraction? Yes, remember I said, if you're preparing for multiple choice, it's very important that you simplify or break down your fractions. Always remember, if there's a whole number, your whole number must be carried over. Very often, persons get excited and they will forget their whole number. Now, can I think of a number that can go both into 4 and 20? We know the number cannot be higher than 4, correct? All right, so we're going to try 4. How many 4s can I get in 4? 1. And how many 4s can I get into 20? 5. So my answer would be 1 and 1 over 5. So let's go through the steps again. We had 4 minus 3. We worked with the whole numbers. We got 1. We found, we found the LCM. Then 20 into 20 gave us 1. We multiply that by the numerator, we got 8. Then 5 into 20 gave us 4. We multiply that by the numerator, we got 4. And we continued our operation. Now, there are times when persons are so caught up that they don't realize that there is a difference in the question. Remember earlier, we had a question where we were trying to subtract 8 from 7. Now, that wouldn't work if we work in with simply proper fractions. But take, for example, we have a question like this. Read the question as I write. 5 and 1 over 2. That's 5 and a half. And I'm going to take away 3 and 3 over 5. Let's start with our simple steps. What is the first thing we need to do? You're correct. Take away the five from the three from the five, and that's going to give me two. I'm doing my new line, and that line will be the line that will separate my numerator from my denominator and different denominators. By now, we have a hang of it. We know we need to find the LCM, correct? Now we have two prime numbers. So simple. We will multiply the 2 by the 5 and our LCM will be 10. Let's take our steps again. The LCM will be divided by the denominator and that quotient or your answer will be multiplied by the numerator. So 2 into 10 will give us 5. 5 by 1 will give me 5. 5 into 10 will give me 2. 2 multiplied by 3 will give me 6. Stop. The answer will not be 2 and 1 over 10. I know you are going to make that mistake. Please note, we are taking away 6 from 5. So if you're home and you're doing something and you really need some ingredients and you started making your dish, you'll run by somebody to borrow some, right? So we'll do the same here. Let's go by our neighbor, Mr. 2. And we ask Mr. 2, to allow us to use one. All right, now remember, we're taking one, but that whole will represent 10 over 10. Why? 
we're working with a denominator of 10. So what we're really going to do after we borrow 1, we will register this, that the remainder is 1. I'm going to put back what we were working with. But that 1 that I borrowed must come over here now. That 1 must adapt to what is happening here. So we said that that 1 is 10 over 10. That's how we got the whole. So our next step will now be 1. Continuing, 10 plus 5 will give me 15. I'll put my minus 6, then I'll have 10. Can you work from there? Let's see here. Keep your 1. 15 minus 6. I know you can do that. You're at 7, you're at 8, you're at 9. Correct? And my answer will be 1 and 9 over 10. Now again, it's always important that you look at your, what the terms will be, your minuend and your subtrahend. So again, when we got to 6 minus 5, did we have a problem? Yes. But what did we do? We went to our neighbor, Mr. 2, and we borrowed 1. Now, 1 doesn't come over as 1. It comes over as a proper fraction. It's going to take the denominator of your home. It's like bringing somebody home, you're, adopt, you're adopting them. You want to give them your surnames, right? So that would become 10 over 10. Then we're going to add 10 plus 5 gave me 15. It gave us 15. We subtracted our 6. We got 9. And then our, our answer is 1 and 9 over 10. You think you have that? Yes? All right, we're going to try one before we end, and then you'll see some questions that you will have to do. We're going to do 9 and 3 over 7, and we're going to take away 5 and 2 over 3. Now, it's always important when you're doing math to look at your question, try to visualize what is being asked, and give a range of where you think your answer will fall. Now, I'm taking away 5 from 9. I'm going to get 4. So it's obvious my answer has to be somewhere around 4. Okay? Now, 3 sevenths and 2 thirds. When you look at this, you know that 3 sevenths is less than half. 2 thirds is more than half. So right there, you should know, hey, I'm going to have a problem there because... I'll have a subtrahend that's bigger than my menu end. So let's go. 9 from 5 will give me 4. 7 by 3 is 21. I don't need to stop to tell you what we're doing. You know it's the LCM, two prime numbers. All right. 7 into 21. 7, 14, 21. So that will give me 3. I'm going to multiply that by 3, and that gives me 9. 3 into 21. Okay, that would give me 7. 7 by 2, 14. Check it out. 9 minus 14. You need to do this math. You don't have enough. What are you going to do? I'm going to go next door and I'm borrowing. So this now will become 3. And remember, always remember to write what you are working with. Ensure that the numbers are the same. So I borrowed one, and that one needs to come across. That one must adapt now. Take my name, right? So it's going to be 21 over 21 to make the whole. So when I add, I will have 21 plus 9, which will give me 30. I need to subtract 14 from that. I put back my denominator of 21. So let's work. 30 from... 14, 14 from 30, sorry, thank you. That will give me 16 over 21. Now, do you think I can break down anything here? Do you think there's a common factor of 16 and 21? No, you're correct. So our answer will be 3 and 16 over 21. So remember, we can subtract proper fractions Always be careful. Look at the denominators. The numerators are subtracted. We have to do some work with the 
denominators. Now, if it's a whole number to take away a proper fraction, remember, if I gave you nine, nine will become eight plus one. And let's say the fraction was three over five, then that will be eight plus five over five. Remember, take your time. Math, correct answers will come by being confident, concentrating, working on your concepts. Keep working on your fractions. Check these two questions out and be ready to give me the answer the next time we have class. Thanks for joining us once again. Educate yourself, spice math. That's right. You won't believe it's just math. Come on. You won't believe it's just math. You won't believe it's just math. Just math. Spice math. That's right. You add it up, multiply it, math. Spice math. Spice math. All right. Take some time. Educate yourself. Spice math.